Oh, we don't have a monitor up here? Can y'all hear me? Okay. So I got my cheat sheet right. I have to, uh, you know, Lewis on the first tour, he opened his mouth and uh, said, we're going to invite you on a tour. And I meant, all of them? And that's how I got him. He had to put up with me for 18 cities and 31 states in 31 days. So I have a little cheat sheet, but... I think when I first went viral, I think so many people got the wrong impression of me in one way, but um, as being direct, you know, being direct doesn't mean you're a butthole or anything like that, you know. And while you are supposed to respect people's opinion, well, in the military, guess what that means? You take orders, you shut up, and you listen, right? And so I was just talking to a veteran back here how when I was in the military, I had to, have, you know, you have to have a little motivation every now and then. And I had a sergeant one time that told me, get your butt off of the ground and act like a soldier. I was having a breakup, right? All right, so we have to be kicked in the butt every now and then, right? We have to be lit a fire under our rear end every now and then. My dad had to do it on the farm, you know. If it were up to me, I would have slept in a lot, right? But that's not how you do it. And I had a great aunt who scorned me one time. She was like, if you have time... To look at the sun, guess what you're not doing? Your chores, your work, right? So when people ask me how this nation got the way it did, why, 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 and how did it get like this? If you got time to ask that question, you ain't reading and researching the laws and the orders. All right? And I know there's some people here who can get mad at me, I'm sure, but I mean, I'm just telling you, this whole operation revolves around two things, God and the military. So first things first, all my veterans, will you please stand up? There we go. Right, because of a what? A military industrial complex we have going on in this nation. It ain't, it ain't organizations and symbols and logos and infrastructures that make things bad. It's people. And our founders weren't a bunch of young men with testosterone problems. They had lived a little life. Can I pick on you a little bit? Okay. They lived a little life. They had a little wisdom under their belt. They had some experience under their belt, didn't they? Right? And now we got what? We got a bunch of spoiled pansies in this country who can't handle the truth. And I've taken hits, and I'm going to keep taking them. Preachers in the South. I'm from the South. Can't you tell I grew up in New Jersey? <laughs> and we have preachers who want to look at the offering plate, and that's how they preach. The Bible is very clear. God has a wrath. And the way we let this country get, we're every bit deserving of the wrath that God could unleash on us because of how we act in this country. And we're supposed to let people know, what are we? What's President Trump say? Outside of God and the military, guess who's right up under them? Donald John Trump. And he laid it right out in front of everybody. I mean, I know, you know, I, I got that slogan. It's right in front of you. It's right in front of you. It's right in front of you. He, every time he signs something, It's beautiful, I tell you. You know, it's like, he told you, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, go read it. Those weren't just words. This ain't no rah-rah pet rally speech. Anybody, an LSU fan, remember the old rah-rah, old Ed Orgeron? <laughs> My dad said he can <laughs> all he wants, but them boys ain't ready to play. They gonna get that butt tore up, okay? And that's the way it is. And we got a nation right now. We're a nation of laws and orders. Donald Trump tells you all the time, we're a nation of laws and orders. Go read the laws and orders. Our founders gave us that privilege. Our founders wanted us to be educated. And our founders didn't want the power to be too much in the federal government either, though. That's why they wrote the Constitution so broad. And so many speakers get up on these stages, and they never talk about one thing, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Because I guarantee you one thing. If we have problems in 1803 where a founding father had to walk in a courthouse and explain what a law looked like, how in the heck do you think it's going to look right now? James Madison having to go into courthouse 14 years after the Constitution and explain what a law was. And what did the Supreme Court do? This is why it's so important to understand this first. The Supreme Court 
It was a landslide, landmark decision. It gave that power to the Supreme Court, right? Any statute that bears the appearance of a law that doesn't support the Constitution is null and void. But the other thing is the man right here is holding up the Declaration of Independence right here. It's just a piece of paper with an idea on it and the Smiths on end. You know who operates that? We do. And I've, I've, even in my young 40 years, I've heard people all the time, that's Congress's job. That's why we're in this position. Because all these career politicians pulled the bads over everybody's head because they knew people didn't know what the heck was going on. And that's why they legislated all this crap that don't matter. And now we got a bill for a bill for a bill and an act for an act for an act and a statute for a statute. And it's, it's just noise. You got to get back to your foundation, right? I will never be able to change the fact that I was born in Mobile, Alabama. And I talk like this. I've been, I've lived in nine states and I have not lost it yet. So the first thing you need to know is your military history. Real quick, where are my army veterans? Where are my Lord, have mercy on me, just me and you? There's three of us, four of us, right? <laughs> oh boy, we're outnumbered. <laughs> Five, we're still outnumbered though. <laughs> so the army, first branch in the military, baby. June 14th, 1775, all right? Then came, guess what? The first war articles, which was military law, June 30th, 1775, all right? Then came the, the Navy, October 13th, then the Marine Corps, November the 10th, the first flag, December the 3rd, what do you know? 1775. Do you know what 1775 comes before? 1776. And I'm an Alabama boy, and I can do math. Right? So our founders created military first and military law long before the Constitution, which our first Constitution was what? The Articles of Confederation, right? 1777. November the 15th. Didn't Donald Trump have a speech recently on November the 15th? You see how all these mirror dates do? He shows you everything. They just lay it right out in front of you like filet mignon. Here you go. Look at there. Oh, Alabama boy can pronounce it correctly too. It's that simple. So do you believe in the military? The, I mean, so if you believe in the military, then guess what you got to do? Believe in our laws. Because guess what? If we apply military law to all these civilians... Now, not y'all, because y'all are good. But if we applied it to all these rats out there, woo, boy, you talking about straighten up quick. They'd straighten up really quick. They'd get that extra duty put on them. Thank God I never had extra duty. But I saw the ones that did, and they were burying cigarettes and all kinds of other stuff. All right? For four months. Now, we ain't talking about no little one-week stuff till, right? Okay. So there's two powers in the U.S. This is our problem right here. There's two powers in the U.S., the military and the federal government. And for the first time in United States history, this is why nothing else matters right now. No courts, no Congress, no anybody but Donald John Trump, the generals, and the military. <laughs> under God, under God, God's, God's directing them. Two powers. The Military Justice Act is the very first piece of paper in United States history. Our United States Supreme Court wrote this in 2016, May 2016, but it didn't pass until 2017 in the National Defense Authorization Act, which is a defense budget, when the federal government's under continuity government. But they wrote it before continuity government. That's your key right there. The Military Justice Act is the first piece of paper in United States history to clarify this. And it's the Supreme Court. They did three things. They separated military law from civil law. They separated the president and commander-in-chief, the roles, the duties, the obligations, the laws. They separated commander-in-chief from the federal government. So what does that tell you when old Derek tells the whole world that Donald John Trump is your commander-in-chief? They told you. 
They told you. I didn't tell you until later. They told you. Right? So that's the first thing you got to understand. So the military, when you hear this all the mainstream, they're under a code right now. We're going to talk about that in a minute. They're under a code right now. All right, so. All right, when you look at that, military occupancy, right? So when you look at the, the blueprint I talk about, June 12th, law war manual came out. June 16th, boss man rolls down that escalator. Four days later, what's the odds of that? Come on. Then, on January 17th, no coincidence, no coincidence, the same date that Eisenhower talked about his military-industrial complex, January 17th, 1961, January 17th, 2017, all your answers laid out there. Federal Continuity Directive 1, it talks about all three branches of government being under a continuity of government. There's our problem. Americans, you go to Google, 75% of America can't even name the three branches of government. Just name them. Oh, God. Judicial, legislative, executive. 75% of America cannot do that. But they want to debate me on laws and orders of the military and everything else. They want to argue, cuss, fuss, gripe, moan, complain. Another word, a B word that I won't say is my mama, if she watches. Federal continuity directive, a continuity of government means the president, the president of the United States of America has a plan called a PPD, a presidential policy directive in place to keep the continuity of government going for our what? Constitutional republic of their national essential functions. So like a defense budget would be an essential function, right? It was a plan from the start. And you got so many Americans that say they believe in the military but don't want to listen to a veteran laying out the daggum laws. And when the mainstream media, there's, once you know what I know, and most of you do, but once you learn that, then you can debunk the mainstream media and know they're under a code because what do they keep saying during this whole time? They keep, at, even on the CNN town hall meeting, right? They asked President Trump about the, him terminating the Constitution. It's an optic, ladies and gentlemen, because guess what? When the federal government's under continuity of government, military's in a military occupancy, the Constitution is put on pause because the law of war manual is the Constitution. Because the military is in a military occupancy, which means they're in control. That's military law. Now, you, the people, don't live under that. And you don't want to, I can assure you. I can tell you. But no one ever stops to think about who holds the keys to all the bases. No one wants to think about who has the armory rooms, the supply rooms, the artillery, all our weapons, everything. That's why we have a military industrial complex and a few veterans out there trying to tap me because they probably made a low score on their ASVAB and they won't go freaking read what I'm talking about because they're under the law. No matter they like it or not, they're serving under it. They take orders, but it's okay. Some of them are trained because they're in a need-to-know basis, right? They don't know this. Because they're working so hard, and I get that. So I cut them a little slack there, but at the same time, they can't be telling people what's going on. Right? So they can't even be telling you, even in uniform, what's going on. There's regulations for that. Right? And that's why I don't go on certain podcasts anymore whenever someone brings on a soldier who's in uniform breaking the violations of the Department of Defense. Because of this. We, everybody in here is a veteran who's lost somebody in service. This is, they pay the ultimate sacrifice under the same law. When I raise my right hand under Title 10 of the Constitution, it's the same Title 10 that gives the President the power to federalize the National Guard Act to duty. You can't have one without the other. On the Democrat side, too, this ain't just a party affiliation. This is a clean out of the deep state, the swamps, the rats. Nobody's saying you can't have a difference of opinion. Nobody's saying you can't believe in gay marriage and stuff like that. Look, don't cram it down children's throat. Let children be children. Let them get up to be adults and make their own decision. Right? That's fine. That's how you live and let live. But we have too much power and control that got put over here on this federal corporation. We don't have time to go into that. You've seen my stuff. But the Executive Order 13848 has one line in there. And if you ever learn to read like a lawyer, and I'm not even a lawyer. We have one in here. 
Uh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? There he is, right there. He told me, he said, when I first heard you, I thought you were a nutcase. I said, I might still be, but I know how to read, I know how to write, and I escaped Alabama doing it. But he turned it around. He said, when he started reading, it's all there. There's one line in that executive order that answers everything. It says, although no foreign power has altered the outcome, or, ladies, ladies love those conjunctions. Men, you want to score with your women, start paying attention to terminology. It matters. Go to, go to the dollar store somewhere and buy them a card. Even if you can't read it or know what it means, they will. <laughs> Terminology matters. Although there has been no foreign power alter the outcome or vote tabulation. Well, guess what? That cancels out January the 6th and all of it. And no one wants to hear it, and I'm going to catch slap for saying it, but J6, those people walked in a foreign territory. Had they known the laws and the orders and they abided by them, see, they're taking punishment right now for it. And I know I'm the bad guy saying that. But the Executive Order 1384, you either believe in God and the military and Donald Trump or you don't. Because that Executive Order was written September the 12th, 2018. And it tells you, although no foreign powers out there alter the outcome or vote tabulation. Alter the outcome means mine and your votes. Or vote tabulation. Two years. Two and a half years before. It tells you right here. Vote tabulation, guess what that is? Objections. What happened in Arizona count? Two objections took place. It was staged to count, uh, to catch all these dirty rats. They broke 18 U.S. Code 2381, 18 U.S. Code 2384, 2385, 52 U.S. Code uh, 20511. It was a trap. Donald Trump and the military trapped all the governors, the Secretary of State, the Attorney Generals, the lawyers and the judges who won't uphold and enforce these laws. January the 6th is a constitutional process for counting electoral colleges. They votes. It wasn't just Trump versus Biden. This is constitutional. So you don't teach people bad habits. You teach them 3 U.S. Code Chapter 15, which tells you what to do when there's two objections. That didn't happen on January 6th because it wasn't supposed to happen. It was a trap set up. Everything the military done is a trap. It's a special operations trap. Now, I was just a young guy in the military. I didn't, you know, I didn't get to serve as long as I wanted to, and a lot of veterans beat me up for all that bull crap. But, hey, sorry, it's what the law says, what the orders say. And I have guys now in special operations who back this. I have chief warrant officers come up to me. Keep doing what you're doing. You're showing everybody what knuckleheads we have to deal with in the military. We have knuckleheads. It ain't, service is not for mine and your resume. It's for y'all. It's for the Constitution. It was never supposed to be bragged about, about going to war. Now, like Patton said, will we win one when we go? Yes. But not stupid corporate wars. And we veterans have to approach that. It ain't like none of us have ever not lost anybody. We've all lost one in the military. Corporate wars. <sighs> Oof, I feel like a Pentecostal preacher. <laughs> Lord. March 2020. March 2020 was the, there was the Valley Forge. Donald John Trump, for the sleepies, became a wartime president in March 2020. March 13th, he declared a national emergency, which y'all just witnessed recently. It said old, old Biden was going to terminate it. Biden ain't done doo-doo. If you go read the code right now, every other code in the code book has a president up under it. Guess what it says? Terminate a national emergency, but whose name is under it? Nobody. Why? Because there was something that, that parallels with it. March 27th, Donald Trump federalized one million reserve components of the military. That order is still active because it's a direct military order. That's where you have to understand military. As long as he's doing the three S's of the military, showering, shaving, and he holds that command. Orders are either rescinded or mission accomplished. Laws are either revised or revoked. They have not been revoked. They have not been revised. They have not been rescinded. They're waiting on that mission accomplished. All right, so I'm going to rush through real quick. 
I want to address this too while we got TV and people here. I'm sick and tired of hearing about Donald Trump endorsing the jab. You got to go back to the origin. You got to go back to the third day after that national emergency. Excuse me, three days after the defederalization of the Guard. National TV. He's got secretary there and a doctor there. He tells the whole world, and you got to take yourself back to March 2020. We didn't know much about what was going on. Remember that time period? Hindsight's 2020. It ain't so hindsight for some people. Guess what he said? National TV. 36 million doses of hydroxychloroquine and 1 million doses of chloroquine. What's that stuff you put in your ears to clean your ears out, peroxide? Maybe we need 36 million doses of that. And the military is a separate life, separate everything. We have our own laws. We have our own everything. Research labs, medical labs, everything. I'm sick and tired of civilians talking about military who don't know anything about it. Either listen to us or go get you some prescription of peroxide. Maybe you got something in your ears that's keeping you from listening to us first. All right. He didn't endorse the jab. You got to go back to the origin. Origin matters. <sighs> Man. Bad military. I heard it. I hear this all the time. What portion of the military is bad? People are bad. God gave us free will. I didn't want to get up this morning. My security guy kept me out late last night. We had fun, but like four hours sleep. When can I ever get a good night's rest? Didn't. Right? But people, I had a choice this morning when I woke up. Oh, I don't want to get up. What I got in the mirror. I ain't pretty with my shirt off. I'm as wide as your shirt, old Gary back here. I'm, I'm wide as your shirt, and it don't change. It don't matter how much sun I get. It don't change. And I said, thank you, God, for awaking me and allowing me to have another day on earth to do your work and to do your will. Now, I could have been negative. I could have been negative, but I wasn't negative. All right, wasn't negative at all. So, roll up here. So, people, people, people. Now, we are, we're humans. What's the Bible say about that stone? Those without sin. And what do we do as humans? We forget about that too, don't we? If we had to stand up every Monday or Sunday or whatever day, whatever day and account for that seven-day period and tell everything we did, that person that pulled out in front of you and you gave them a little finger, or y'all Californians love that horn, but it, they do put them on the vehicle, don't they? Right? I mean, it's there for a reason. I forget mine's there, and I accidentally, you know, hit it. Oh, it scares me. And I'm like, ooh, I forget I have this. I don't need a middle finger. I got this. Lay on it. And if country boys, we know there's a little thing that they, they can adapt to it, and they get one of them fog horns, and you can attach it and put it on your vehicle, and oh, my Lord. You go down through Mississippi, they don't thought the rapture took place. You let down on that. So the map, the, ba the map, bad military. Chapter 18 of the Law of War Manual was taking care of the bad military. Y'all see anybody follow me? You see me post all these commanders being relieved of duty. We're talking about commanders now. We're talking about like 10, 15, 20, 30 year dudes. The military doesn't instill integrity and honesty and accountability and responsibility. You either got it or you don't. My dad's always been like that. You either got it or you don't, son. And you can't make people do that. You can't beat it in them or nothing. It's unfortunate, right? <laughs> well, I'm not beating, I guess, but, you know. So, National Guard. How do I know all this is taking place? Here's another thing, all the veterans out there. Lord, have mercy. <sighs> we have active duty. We have National Guard. And we have reserve components. It depends on what your lifestyle is. Most people who choose National Guard is because they're married and got children and that going off the basic training and AIT is already long enough, right, because you can't talk to your loved ones. Sometimes you can. It depends on what unit you're with, what not, what privileges you get. But most people choose guard because if they've already married and have children, it fits their lifestyle. They work, and then they do what? What's the Ma National Guard's motto? One week in a month, two weeks a year. How in the heck are all the National Guard out of their states every single day for the last since the order was given? 
The only person who can federalize the National Guard Act of Duty is Donald John Trump, the president. Not just him, but the president. Title 10. There's the same Title 10 me and you raised our right hand to. But people want to, oh, I love our military. Da, 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 da. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know that Donald Trump federalized the National Guard Act of Duty? Oh, da, da, da. You can't have one without the other. That Title 10 works both ways, right? So that's the problem we have. Is so many veterans, they're, they're, they've taken me as an attack mode. Don't. I'm, ta I'm trying to motivate you. The very key people right now who should be the most awake are the military, our veterans, my brothers, my sisters. Come on. Wake up. Act like a professional. In the Army, we have a creed. We have a soldier's creed. Right? We have a creed. We have an oath. We have, it's a livelihood. Live like you're worthy of it. And that's the problem we have. So the National Guard, they told you right in front of everybody. Remember January 2021? They told you, right? You had the National Guard moving in. They moved in January the 6th and January 17th. Who was the president? And who was the only person who could have made that call? Does he have to tell you? No. Are you in the military right now? No. And they got old Pelosi up there. Drunk Pelosi is what I call her. Drunk Pelosi. Since when does a House representative have control of the military? I missed the memo. And governors, I'm tired of this. Well, governors have control of their National Guard. For state emergencies only. Do you know how many power tripping governors we would have had by now? Good Lord have mercy. I'm pretty sure the South would have risen again already if that would have been the case. I mean, but seriously. We have to have a, a checks and balances again. That's what our founders established. Right? You can't have too much of this, 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 this. But we, how in the heck do we have Americans who take pride in our military but then turn around and don't know the very premise of a, a veteran telling you? And how do we have veterans that don't know that? And then you watched it right in front of you. And then they told you what? We're putting this fence up for the inauguration. Doggone. That's a long inauguration. We were in D.C. in October. The fence is still up. I didn't see anybody out there celebrating old 81. How can you watch this guy trip upstairs, not down? The dude... And in the same day, a couple hours later, he's taking a stroll on the bike. Gracefully. And his hair on his legs. Look at that. What color is that? Brown. Black. His legs look like they're 40 years old. I think I got alopecia on my ankles because the other day I looked down there and I ain't got no hair right here. I'm, got, I'm getting old. My dad ain't got no hair down here anymore. How does Joe Biden have hair? And it looks like hair hair. It looks like Wolfman Jack. It looks like Team Wolf. What was it, Michael J. Fox? How can people watch this? regulations that dude don't have a shaving profile you have to have a profile in the military to have a beard y'all wouldn't know that if you're not in the military but you wouldn't have a doggone full beard unless you're michael jaco in special forces <laughs> privileged that's not every military tell them and i go i go grow my beard out the other day they go on show with him and he's shaved I'm like, look, I did this for you, and you saved yours. 
How do you have, like, so Harris, you got a soldier in, with a full beard, and then you got a dude in a regular suit. I mean, it's it's a disgrace in another way, but at the same time, my God, I mean, dang, you get this salute just because you're the pilot? And it was a regular aircraft. Where's this? Where's Jayco and all his people? Where's the Secret Service? Here I am, Vice President. Ah, ain't nobody gonna shoot me. How can people not see it? I mean, it, come on, I mean, it, then they got them both riding together. No big deal. No national security whatsoever. They, they both crashed. Some of y'all be like, oh. But I don't even root for that. My gosh. I mean, we're talking about human here, you know, but still. Yeah. 47 U.S. Code 606 is actually titled War Powers of the President. Why was the mainstream media asking Trump in 2020, March, are you a wartime president? How many people know what a wartime president is, by definition? What's the mainstream media doing talking about, are you a wartime president? How did people not see that? He said, well, yeah, I, I believe I am. You know why? Because when he also federalized the National Guard and the reserve components, the active duty, he used the same laws that Franklin D. Roosevelt used. Chapter 50, so 50 U.S. Code, Chapter 33, Section 1541. When he can't enforce a law, he can by military. And guess what also happened? February 2017, H.R. Resolution, number 75. The War Powers Resolution was amended. Uh-oh. February 2017, who was the president again? The ripe new president? And we have Congress changing the War Powers Resolution Act. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, SpaghettiO. <laughs> that the president could send our boys and men and women into hostilities in 48 hours and then alert Congress. Uh-oh. That's our military, ladies and gentlemen. It's a different way of life. And I'm not trying to knock patriots out there, but we can't teach people bad habits. We can't teach people. We already have a statute of 1845 when, where, and how we vote. We already have that. We already have in our Constitution what takes place during a, an objection. We already have that. We have people that don't know that. And it ain't complicated. Guess what the statute of 1845 says again? Oh, gosh, here goes Alabama boy again. Oh, God. First Tuesday of November. Dang, I thought it was complicated. First Tuesday of November, is that right? First Tuesday. How hard is that? We can't, we can't even have honest and fair in a regular setting. All right, I probably need to wrap it up, but, and this is probably the best one to do it with. And then this, just this week, I know people, it's been so hard, it has been. It's been hard being a Christian through this process because it's like you, I tried my best through the whole process to, you know, not talk about somebody and their name and stuff like that. But at the same time, President Trump, right when I was going through some stuff, uh, we were told by a security team and everything. And of course, I've I've met Boss Man twice, which is really cool. And you got people out there, that ain't really Trump. I'm like, oh, yeah, so they're going to put the real Trump out at a rally. And the guy who's at his private club with a wall taller than Jericho is the fake Trump. I got you. And these people ain't ever been around a Trump garbage can, much less Trump himself. But even if it was a body double, who's still with him? And then you got all these people out there, they bash you, they come at you. It's been, a, it's been a learning process for sure in a different way because I'm an honest person. I care about people. I try not to talk about people. I try to do the right thing all the time when people aren't looking. See, that's where integrity is bought. Integrity ain't always saying stuff when people are watching you. It's what you're doing when you ain't being watched. And I've tried and I've tried and I've tried, and then it's like, you know, Finally, President Trump puts out a, just a couple of days ago, just about four or five days ago, he said sometimes you have to t speak badly about people who for no other reasons than politics are speaking badly about you. You have to put them in their place, especially when you know your record. I could go in a courtroom right now, put my DD-214 down, 
income statement, bank statement, medical records, everything. And all these haters be tucking that tail and running. But this ain't about me. They make it more about me than I do. I've never made it about me. Anybody knows me? Anybody's ever met me, been on the road with me? I don't make it about me. It ain't about me. I was in the middle of bum freaking nowhere. A buddy of mine was having a trouble reading my documents. And I said, give me five minutes. I'll ride up the road. I'll go live on Facebook. Nobody's going to watch because they're at work. And boom. Thanks to du look, look, look. my boy back here. He's telling me I got to shut up, and I'm giving him a shout out. Give me five more minutes for that shout out. So, you know, but I'm ra I am, I'm wrapping up, but it's like, at some point you have to just tell people that what's the God's honest truth. I brought y'all receipts. And let me tell you something, my security guy, wherever he's at, Mark, I don't know where he's at, but he's probably working. But we have people, podcasters, they better be careful. When you mislead American people, with false information and all this blowing smoke up the dresses, let me tell you who's watching you. The military. These military tribunals and courts ain't just for the elites. All you frauds out there, all you scams out there, and you wanna you wanna lump me in that bull crap? And I've done nothing but give people the receipts, dot gov, dot mil, laws and orders, we're national laws and orders. Let me tell you what, all these frauds out there, when they can't beat you, they gotta try to bash you. But you know why God sent a country music singer with two billboard hits and no record label to the party? Because I know all about publicity. And it ain't about publicity. Anybody who makes this about my service, it ain't about my service. You think I don't know how long I serve? You think I didn't think about it when I got out that, man, I, I wish I could have served longer? You don't think I don't think about that? Come on. God had other plans with me. And when you start answering to God and not your own selfish ambitions, it don't matter how, how awesome they are. You would have thought two billboard hits would have made me happy. It didn't. This makes me more happy than those ever did because I'm serving God's will. He told me, if, if, if you'll do my will first, delight yourself in the Lord, and I'll do what? I'll give you the desires of your heart. But you're going to do my work first, big boy. You wanted to serve longer in the military? Guess what? I'll serve you. I'm serving right now. So this whole week, we've had a, I had a little uh, a someone I've been on their show with, and I've had to correct them. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to correct you, and I don't want to. But come on, man. This ain't about us. This ain't about. But January the 20th, 2021, this is real simple. The United States Army official presidential salute battery. They perform all inaugurations and funeral honors for presidents and generals, right? has nothing to do with a president dying in a different way. When a president dies, all right, how many presidents you think die on January the 20th? It's real simple. By the way, where's Hunter? Where That's is awesome. Hunter? Remember? Where's Hunter? So, January the 20th, 2021. The official presidential salute battery. They perform inauguration services. And we have a Navy veteran this week trying to talk trash with me. Stay in the Navy, homeboy. Let the Army do our job. It's not, and his, this person claims to be a Trump supporter. Dear God, help us all. So, once again, on January 20, 2021, military funeral 